Good morning, class. In lecture, we talked about electrostatic forces. These are forces that electric fields exert on static charges. And we learned about magnetic forces, which are forces that magnetic fields exert on moving charges. And in this lab, we're going to put those two things together. We're going to write down a law of electromagnetic forces and then we're going to explore how electric and magnetic fields simultaneously affect charges, the forces that such fields exert on charges when they're present simultaneously. And uh, we're going to do that via a simulation. Okay, so let's talk about the theory of electrostatic forces and the theory of magnetic forces and see how they fit together. So the electrostatic force can be expressed as a force law, which is also called Coulomb's law, which we learned in class. And one way you can write out Coulomb's law is in terms of the electric field that gives rise to this force on a static charge. So what does this look like? The electrostatic force experienced by a charge Q in an electric field E can be written out like that. The electrostatic force equals the product of the electric field, um, which is also a vector quantity, times Q, the magnitude of the charge. Magnetic force. Well, in lecture we learned that the magnetic force that a moving charge experiences in a magnetic field is dependent on the cross product between the velocity vector that that charge possesses and the magnetic field vector. If you have both an electric field and a magnetic field simultaneously, a charge may experience both of these forces simultaneously. And the sum of those two forces is just the vector, the sum of that, the total force is just the vector sum of these two individual forces. Fe and Fb. In other words, the total force equals Fe plus Fb, which equals that. And write it as F equals Q times the product of E plus V cross V. So the electric force, the component of this total force, which is the electrostatic force, always points in the same direction as the electric field lines, or if it's a negative charge, the opposite directions. It's either parallel or anti-parallel to the electric field lines. Now the magnetic force, the component of this total force, which is the magnetic force, its direction is the result of this cross product, V cross B. So that means it's perpendicular to V and B simultaneously. And we can figure that out via the right hand rule. All right, so this uh, force law that combines the electric and the magnetic forces is called the Lorentz force. So the simulation that you are going to um, explore in this week's lab implements this, uh, this force law, the Lorentz force, in Python and allows you to explore, if you think about the parameters, allows you how to, to explore how the strength of the electric field, the strength of the magnetic field, and the velocity of the particle affects the way that particle interacts with these fields. All right, so let's spend some time. Let me introduce the simulation for you, and then um, I'll set you free to complete the assignment. When you log into WebAssign, you'll see the assignment that goes along with this week's lab. It's called Laboratory 10 Lorentz Force. And when you open that assignment and click on the description tab, there's a link to Lorentz Force Simulation on Trinket.io. You click that, Trinket.io will open. 
Trinket.io is a pretty nifty website. It allows you to run code written in a number of different programming languages right in your browser. So here I've written a program in Python to simulate a proton, a charged particle, a positively charged particle, although I could change that to be a negatively charged particle. But it's set up as a positively charged particle indicated by this red ball here, this sphere, that can potentially be subjected to electric fields and magnetic fields simultaneously. And uh, this, this code is written in vPython, which is very similar to the computational labs that we worked with last semester. And, but unlike last semester where you had to run that on a desktop computer, here you can run the code, run the simulation right in your web browser. And the reason this is possible, that you can run the simulation right in your web browser, even though it's written in Python, is because it uses a project called GlowScript that converts, translates, the Python code into JavaScript, which runs in your web browser. So the Trinket interface here has a panel where you can edit the code, and then it's got a panel that shows the visualization that goes along with the code. And there's a number of other features as well. Uh, you can create an account, and that will allow you to remix this Trinket, which means create your own copy of it, sort of like uh, forking a, a repository on GitHub and uh, then you can make changes to it, although you don't have to do that in this case. You can just make changes to this code right in your web browser and then click this play button or run button to view the results. All right, so another thing you can do is you can make this simulation full screen, make the text a little larger so you can see it. And uh, so when you're running it full screen, half the screen, you can change that. It's taken up by the editor where you can make modifications to the code and the other half is the visualization. So in all this code there's only three lines that you're going to change in order to do this simulation lab, this computational lab. And those three lines of code specify three parameters of the of this simulation. Um, one line of code is, I'll show you where they are, right here, a line of code which specifies the initial velocity of the particle. Particle dot V is the initial velocity. And let me make this a little bigger. So I made the code a little bigger so you can see that. So particle dot V is the initial velocity of this positively charged particle representing a proton. And notice that it's specified as a velocity as a vector. So it's specified in vector notation, which in vPython is written out like this. You have vec vector, and then there's three values that you give this function to create a vector quantity. And the three values are the x component, the y component, and the z component of that vector quantity. All right, so you'll be changing the particle's velocity, initial velocity, um, and you'll also be changing the magnetic field. Particle dot B is a vector quantity giving the magnetic field in this simulation, and particle dot E is a vector quantity given the, giving the electric field in this simulation. And the magnetic field and the electric field are uniform everywhere in the space of this simulation but you can change their values. You can give X, Y, and Z components to these uniform, which means same everywhere, um, fields. So right now everything's set to zero. The initial velocity is zero and the magnetic field and the electric fields are zero. This smaller again. So we can see the visualization. When I click run, nothing happens. The particle just sits there. If you look at the simulation itself, this, uh, this visual of the simulation, um, I've put coordinate axes on here. So there's an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis. So to the right is the positive x direction. To the left would be negative x. Up is positive y, down is negative y. Out of the screen 
is positive z and into the screen is negative z. So if I give this particle an initial velocity of, make it something like 1 times 10 to the 7th meters per second and run it, so in the, in the simulation, simulated time is much slowed down compared to real time. If I run it, there the particle goes. And as the particle moves off the field of the simulation, it auto resizes. But if you see, you can zoom in using the wheel on my mouse. The particle leaves behind a trail. So you can see where it's been. Another thing you do is if I use my right mouse button and I click and drag, I can rotate the whole simulation. Okay, and I can even do that while it's running. You can see where the particle's going, and you see there's a little vector, a little arrow that's attached to the particle as it moves. That shows the velocity vector. If I make the velocity larger, 3 times 10 to the 7th, and rerun it, you see it goes faster and the vector representing velocity is now an arrow that's longer. <laughs> All right, there it is. Okay, so what if I make the velocity vector so that initially the x component is 0, but the y component is 3 times 10 to the 7th. Or let's make it negative 3 times 10 to the 7th. When I click Run, where's this particle going to go? Do you know? It goes down. It goes in the negative x direction. And if I make the particle move in x in the positive x direction and the negative y direction it goes down and to the right. All right. So in the same way, you can control the electric field strength, uh, the electric field and the magnetic field. So, for example, what if I say the initial velocity is zero, but specify the electric field so that it points to the right and has a strength of five, four times 10 to the fifth newtons per coulomb in the x direction and zero in the y, zero in the x, what's gonna happen to this positively charged particle? Remember, it's, it's going to want to move in the direction of the electric field lines. Let's watch. So now you see there's both a velocity vector and a vector for the electric field. The blue arrow represents the electric field vector attached to the particle, and the red arrow attached to the particle is the velocity vector. And what if I were to do something like this? I'll give it a, I'll give it a, a simulation of magnetic field, 0.1 tesla in the negative y direction, and uh, the electric field is still four times 10 to the fifth newtons per coulomb in the positive x direction and I run it. Well, now it's doing some crazy stuff. Look at that. But what you see, again, the, the blue arrow attached to the particle shows the direction of the electric field. The green arrow attached to the particle shows the direction of the magnetic field. And if we zoomed in, the red arrow is still there, although it's so tiny, it's hard to see. All right, so there's this little key in the visualization for red V because the velocity vector is red, green B because the magnetic field vector is green, blue E because the electric field vector is blue. All right, so that was a quick overview of this simulation, this computational lab running in Trinket, and the three lines of code that you'll have to change in the program to answer the questions that are presented to you in WebAssign. So the next step is to go back to the WebAssign assignment and go through the questions one at a time, and the questions will ask you 
to perform specific tasks in the simulation to set it up in such a way that the initial velocity, the electric field, and the magnetic field are certain values, and then to uh, run simulations and answer the questions. Um, this will be a good chance for you to practice the right-hand rule, giving you the relationship between the velocity vector, the magnetic field vector, and the force vector for the magnetic force, and it will be a good chance for you to see some crazy behavior of charged particles moving in regions of space where there are electric and magnetic fields simultaneously. Situations where you have crossed fields yield very interesting phenomena. Okay, so carry on, complete the assignment on WebAssign, and uh, shoot me an email if you have any difficulty or have any questions.